Let's say you want to find out sine of uh, 7 pi over 12. Now this isn't one that we memorized on the unit circle, so what we can do is we can take uh, two angles that either add or subtract to give us 7 pi over 12 um, using those two angles that we know on the unit circle. So sometimes students, they struggle a little bit with radians, so what you might want to do is change 7 pi over 12 into degrees. So let's do that here. 7 pi over 12 multiplied by 180 over pi. The pi radians cancel. 12 goes into 180 15 times. 7 times 15 is 105 degrees. So now we just have to ask ourselves, what two angles that we know on the unit circle add up to 105? So that would be like 60 and 45. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this as sine of 60 plus 45. So you can see in our formula here, A is 60 and B is 45, and I'm going to substitute those in for A and B on the right side of the equation. So this equals sine of 60 cosine 45 plus cosine 60 times the sine of 45. Okay, now you want to reference your unit circle. Uh, if you want to review that, you can go to my video on unit circle. But here, sine of 60 equals square root 3 divided by 2. Cosine 45 is square root 2 over 2. Cosine 60 is 1 half, and sine of 45 is square root 2 over 2. Multiply these together. Square root 6 over 4 plus square root 2 over 4. So I'm just multiplying numerators and denominators. And then because these have the same denominator, we can combine them together into one fraction. So square root of 6 plus square root of 2 all divided by 4. So this is an exact answer. You can of course go to your calculator and find out what sine of 105 degrees is. But that's going to give you a long decimal. This is an exact answer. So sometimes it's helpful to have the exact value for sine of 105 degrees and that's how you would do it. So now let's look at another example. Here what they're giving us is what you can see is actually the right side of this equation. And you want to try to identify which one it is that they're giving us. It looks like it's cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. Cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. You can see that's going to be the cosine sum formula, okay, because these are the opposite, right, for cosine. So here what we have is cosine of 35 plus 85. 35 plus 85 is 120 degrees. So this is cosine of 120. And we know from our unit circle, uh, cosine of 120 equals, uh, let's see, negative 1 half. Okay, so that's how we work with the formula in reverse. So they're giving us the right side and we're condensing it to the left side. In this first problem, they gave us the left side and we expanded to solve uh, using the right side of the identity. So now the last question we're going to talk about is, how do you find the tangent of u minus v if sine of u equals 5 twelfths and cosine of v equals 3 fifths? Both angle u and v are in quadrant 3. Okay, so what I recommend for this one is to draw the two triangles in their respective third quadrant. So we'll do that here. And so here we've got uh, angle u in the third quadrant. Okay, so here's u. Here's V, okay? I don't know why they use U and V, those sometimes are difficult because they look similar, but this is U and this is V. Sine of U equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Notice the hypotenuse is always positive, the radius is always positive. And if you do the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to change this problem here a little bit to make this a little bit easier. Let's call this 5 thirteenths, and we'll make this negative 12. Okay, so you're just solving for the missing side of the triangle. And notice that you're going to the left, that's why this segment here is negative, and here you're going down, that's negative, but the radius or the hypotenuse is always positive. Okay, for this one, cosine of angle V, we have 3 fifths. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so if we solve for the missing side, this is going to be negative 4, just using Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so there we go. So there's our two triangles. 
I had to adjust these a little bit to make the numbers you know, work out a little bit easier for our example. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out what is the tangent of u minus v. So here you can see we're using this tangent difference formula, tangent of u minus v. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand this out. I'll go over here. We've got tangent of u minus tangent of v all divided by one plus tangent of u times the tangent of v. Okay, so where do we find the tangent of u? We go to the triangle. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 5 twelfths minus the tangent of v, which is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 4 thirds divided by 1 plus the tangent of u, which is what we got over here, 5 twelfths times the tangent of v, which is what we saw for here, which is 4 thirds. Notice that the negatives cancel, so that's why we have, these are positive values. Now all you have to do is just do some arithmetic and simplify this complex fraction. Get common denominators, get common denominators, and then uh, dividing is like multiplying by the reciprocal, and you can simplify this down. So this is how to find tangent of u minus v when they give you two angles. Just draw those in the quadrant okay, that they're saying that they're in, and solve for the missing side, that's the key. And then pay attention, if you're going left, it's negative, right is positive, up is positive, and down is negative. And so this, these are some examples for how do you work with the sum and difference formulas, um, you know, with trigonometric functions. And it's a way of getting, you know, exact values, okay, when you don't necessarily know those values on the unit circle, the ones we studied, the multiples of uh, 30, 45, 60, 90, like that. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.